Hello Year 11, this is Module B5, which is Growth and Development. The first thing you need to understand about is cells and tissues and organs. Now remember, a tissue is a collection of cells which are very, very similar. For example, muscle is a tissue because it's made up of muscle cells. Blood is a tissue because it's made up of blood cells. Now an organ is a collection of similar tissues which come together to do a specific function. So for instance, the heart is an organ because it's made up of connective tissue, muscle tissue, capillary tissue, and so on. The leaf is also an organ, remember that one. The stem is an organ of the plant, and the roots are organs. You need to know the difference between an organ and a tissue. Then we went on to lesson two, which was looking at stem cells. Now, stem cells, remember, have the ability to transform themselves into any other type of cell. They do this by reactivating the genes inside the cell. The most important type of stem cells, as far as we're concerned, are called embryonic stem cells. And they are found in the developing embryo, right up until the eight cell stage of development. After that, these cells start to specialize. A specialized stem cell can only become one type of cell. So for instance, a skin stem cell can only become a skin cell. A muscle stem cell can only become a muscle cell. That's what we mean by specialized. However, an embryonic stem cell, because it's unspecialized, that means it can have, or has the potential to become any type of cell you want. The problem scientists have at the moment is we don't know how to switch on the correct genes to do this. Okay, moving on. These stem cells then start to divide. Cell division is split into two different types, which are very, very confusing. The first one is called mitosis, and the second one is called meiosis. I'll start with mitosis. Now try to remember the phrase, you don't have sex with your toes. What this implies is every type of cell division in your body is mitosis. So hair growth, nail growth, muscle growth, growth repair of anything is mitosis. The only one type of cell division which is not mitosis is in your sex cells. So you produce eggs, if you're a female, by meiosis. You produce sperm, if you're a male, by meiosis. If you're a plant, you produce pollen by meiosis. Okay? So meiosis is used only in sex cells. Now the technical term for a sex cell is a gamete. That's G-A-M-E-T-E. -E. Okay, they're called gametes. And gametes have half the number of chromosomes of a normal adult cell. In a human, adult cells have 46 chromosomes. That's 23 pairs. So an adult gamete is going to have 23 chromosomes, okay? Now, bear in mind, that's not always the case in every single animal and plant. In the examinations, they may give you something like a marshmallow or a cotton plant and say that it's got something like 56 chromosomes. The same principle applies. The gamete of that would have half of 56, okay? But it's not necessarily that other species apart from humans will have 46 chromosomes, but humans do. Now, what happens during mitosis? Well, first of all, the number of chromosomes double to 92, and then you split them into two identical daughter cells, okay? The cells are identical. That's very, very, very important. So from one cell, you end up with two identical cells. Now, meiosis is slightly different. The first thing that happens is the chromosomes double again to give 92, and then it splits, and then it splits again. So from the one cell, you end up with four daughter cells. And these cells are not identical. Every single cell produced by meiosis is different in some way. They all show variation. And from one cell, you get four. You need to know the difference between mitosis and meiosis. Okay, the cell cycle itself. Now, if you remember from class, we said the cell has a life cycle. So it's born after mitosis where it divides. Then what happens is the number of organelles within the cell increases. Organelles are small little components of the cell, such as ribosomes, mitochondria, um, chloroplast, etc., etc. So they increase, and then what happens during the S phase is the DNA doubles. Do you remember that? When it unzips. DNA doubles, 
then what happens is mitosis and the cell splits into two again. Okay, DNA itself. Remember that DNA is a double helix structure. A helix means curly, so DNA is curly. Double because there are two strands of it, okay? Both strands of the DNA are made up of four different base pairs. Adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. A always joins with T, and C always joins with G, and you must know that, okay? Duplicate strands of DNA are made by an enzyme unzipping the DNA down the middle, and then complementary base pairs aligning themselves to each strand to make two copies of the DNA. Now, how, what does the DNA actually do? Well, the theory you need to understand is called the one gene, one protein theory, okay? Because each gene on the chromosome codes for the production of one protein, and it works like this. All the genetic material is found inside the nucleus of the cell, okay? Now, inside the nucleus, what happens is at the section of the gene which needs to be copied, the DNA opens, and we then make an mRNA copy. The mRNA then leaves the nucleus and goes into the cytoplasm, where it attaches to a structure called a ribosome. At this point, then, amino acids are attached in the correct order to produce a protein. Now, how do we know which amino acid codes for what? Well, the base pairs are organized into threes. A sequence of three base pairs is called a codon. So, for instance, AAT would be a codon. Each codon represents one amino acid. So it is the sequence of codons which appear which will tell you the order of the amino acids. Okay, well, that's that bit done. Gene switching. Now, bear in mind, in every single cell, not all the genes are going to be switched on. It depends what the cell is. In certain cells, um, the genes, for instance, for chloroplasts might be switched on. But in a human cell, obviously the gene for a chloroplast wouldn't be switched on. In every cell, certain genes are always switched on. For instance, the gene to make a cell membrane is going to be switched on in every single cell. The gene to make cytoplasm will have to be switched on in every different type of cell. All right, moving on from that, you have to understand about plant growth for some strange reason. Now, plants, like animals, can grow and develop. Plants, instead of having stem cells, have cells which are called meristems. That's M-E-R-I-S-T-E-M-S. -E -E but they do they're pretty much the same thing. Some plant cells can remain unspecialized throughout their life, which means plant cells can develop into other parts of the plant as is necessary. For instance, if a leaf falls off, a plant can grow another leaf back. If a branch falls off, a plant can grow it back. That's because it keeps unspecialized cells, okay? Plants are also different from animals because plants continue to grow throughout their lives, both in height and width, whereas animals tend to stop at a certain age, okay? Now, phototropism. Photo means light, tropism means growing towards, okay? All plants exhibit phototropism, which means they grow towards the light. They do this by means of a hormone called auxin. That's A-U-X-I-N. Auxin is produced in the tip of the shoot. What it does, it, it diffuses down the stem to the correct side. If auxin touches a part of the stem, that part of the stem will expand. So, for instance, if the stem wants to bend to the right, the auxin would go down the left-hand side or the shady side, expand the size of those cells so it will bend over to the right. Similarly, if you wanted to bend to the left, the auxin would go down the right-hand side. If you cut the tip of a plant off or covered it in some way, it would grow straight up because the auxin then couldn't detect which way the light is coming from. Okay, I think that's it. Good luck.